Used what? Sorry? Sunlight. Oh, good. So here the video. So right now it's blue and it's now shifting into purple. And then there's a glare too, so it's very white also. Yes. How do we separate those? And we can actually uh, tell that from our data. So this was a sample of our uh, data when we record at 10 degrees. We got three big peaks right around the blue green area, and like the yellow too. Yeah, yellow. And then this was just at 90 degrees. And then basically from our data from 10 degrees to 90 degrees, we recorded the peak uh, fluorescence at each color of the spectrum, visible light spectrum. And with each of those points, we graphed them based on color and degrees. So basically, we found inverse uh, relations in between, or yeah, between fluorescence and degrees. Yeah, and that kind of explains the glare because at a smaller angle, you see the big glare, and you can tell it's kind of high up there and lower at the big angles. Yeah. Wait, help me understand. Is an angle defined away from normal or d away from the surface? Okay, so away. let's go back to this one. So that is 90 degrees up there. Yeah, it's from the surface. Like, I mean, it's kind of hard to help it. Wow. It's from the surface of the calculator for this film. Yeah, so when you're like straight uh, looking down from the top, we count that at 90 degrees. And we are almost flat uh, at the, when we are almost, let me see. No, I understand. You've specified it well. Let's just keep going. Yeah. <coughs> okay, and that's our conclusion. Well, yeah, basically from our graph, we got different uh, coefficients. Yes, yeah, like so we can see the coefficients. Each of the colors have different coefficients, but we really weren't, like, too sure what exactly it all meant as well. Like... We're trying to find a relationship between... That's probably the surface of the microflake that's in the pent that does all these work. Yeah. yeah. And we can't really find like any source to compare with because I don't think anyone has done this before. Yeah, for like air, we didn't really have anything to compare it to. We couldn't really find any experiment like this online. And 
I mean, there isn't really much like information about this material. It's like yeah. not very, it's not a hot topic. But yeah, but then we, I found this color blender app and it basically shows you like how we see colors because we can, this is RGB, so this is for like the internet. But basically you can like, you know, blend these three colors together and you get, you get the color that you see. Kind of works the same way here, I guess, because we see the, um, I mean, there's going to be more than six wavelengths, but in our experiment, we only uh, paid attention to the six major wavelengths of visible light, or like, I would say, range, I guess. Eight colors, yeah. And, yeah, aka colors. And these colors are blend, and that's how we see, some, somehow that's how we see blue and purple, I guess. And then, yeah, basically. And some gold, too. Yeah. There's gold in that. Yeah. yeah. And then, just to wrap it up, we, yeah, we saw an inverse relationship between the fluorescence and degree, the angle. And, uh, what well, so else? The coefficients we found, like, weren't really related to the color. Because, like, what, blue? Uh, no, I mean, there's, like, a, like, three of them is higher, three of them is yeah, lower. Yeah. We had blue, green, and yellow had higher coefficients than violet, orange, and red. And basically it just means like the color will vary at each angle based on those coefficients is basically what we discovered and that's it. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> yes. Can you go back to your your beautiful graph, please? That um it seems like with these data, you find a very obvious conclusion that there is a uh, a brightness that increases if the angle is small, right? But I'm, I wonder, can you dig deeper into this and say some more things about why it changes from purple to red or vice purple, purple to blue? Yes, whatever, whatever it was. Like I, I imagine you would want to zoom into each of those or talk about the difference between the trends for each color. Is that a separate trend for each color? Yes. So, so discuss those distinctions and why it's a shift. So for violet, we have the coefficient, the A is 2.3, blah, blah, blah. And for blue is 3.4, for green is 3.7, and yellow is 3.6, orange 2.4, and red 2.49. So. Uh, from these six numbers, you can tell that uh, blue, green, and yellow has a slight higher coefficient, and violet, mm, violet, orange, and red has a lower coefficient. So maybe when they shift or when you tilt the angle, they shift in like really different, you know, different styles. So I mean, different styles with that, like, you know, different coefficients. So that's how, I think that's how the colors, you know, that's how you see different colors. Because maybe, um, I'll say, let's just say blue and purple, or blue and violet. Um, like, blue will shift faster than violet, or violet will shift, so they just shift, like, okay. So they change at a different rate, so when you change it, uh, the amount of light they will reflect it's going to change too, and the ratio is different, and maybe with, after the blend, we see a different color. So does the, does the data reflect your vision? You're saying that blue is changing more because it has a larger coefficient? Basically. Um, kind of. I mean, not exactly, like, because uh, red is always low, but um, I guess that's how we, like, see it, because... Um, for example, let's say. I mean, blue was kind of like the most prevalent color. Yeah, like, and here at our low angles, um, blue is a lot more higher than violet. But at our low angles, they're getting closer. You mean large angles? Yeah, large angles. Yeah, large angles. Can you show me that they're getting closer? Yeah, so Could we zoom into that or, or something? I'll probably zoom in, but I can point at it. Degree. So that's a blue dot here yeah. at 10 degrees, and that's a violet. And the difference is about this big. But as the angle shifts, the difference becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. Does the fractional difference become smaller and smaller, though? Because the whole thing is becoming smaller and smaller. I don't know if their percent difference changes because they're um, slammed together in a tiny yes, little Yes, it does. Wow. 
we, we, our scale is from 1 to uh, no, 0 to 0 0.4. So at this place right here, maybe this is at 3.87, and this is at 2.8. So that's a really big difference. But at this point, um, it's probably not as much. I'll say the difference is going to be less. 